Hi students, welcome to Year 11 Biology and Module 2, Organization of Living Things. This is the last in our little video series looking at nutrient and gas requirements. So we're going to try and pull some things together and compare the nutrient and gas requirements of autotrophs and heterotroph. This is a great opportunity for you to put together a comparison table. And comparison tables are a really useful tool. When you put a comparison table together, what they do is they create a whole lot of individual cells, and each of these cells really should be filled. So when you set up a table like this, it allows you to see at a glance whether you've covered all of the key things that you need to make sure that you've covered in order to understand the process. So what we have to do is we have to compare autotrophs and heterotrophs in terms of their nutrient and gas requirements. So let's start with the gases. Now we've distinguished between autotrophs, so um, primarily we're just gonna have plants as our autotrophs, and heterotrophs, let's just uh, make it simple on ourselves at the moment and look at animals. So we've been able to contrast plants and animals in terms of their gas requirements. Now, both plants and animals require oxygen for aerobic respiration. Now, there obviously is uh, several different forms of anaerobic respiration, but the most efficient form of respiration is aerobic, and that requires oxygen, which means that both heterotrophs and autotrophs require oxygen. But I guess the difference between them is how they get it. Because the other thing that autotrophs do is they photosynthesize. So it's in the photosynthesis process that carbon dioxide, which is required for photosynthesis, and therefore that adds an extra requirement to the gases, is actually um, through the process of photosynthesis and combination with water converted into oxygen, which is a byproduct. The consequence of the photosynthesis process is that plants tend to be um, net positive for oxygen, which means they are going to re uh, release some of the oxygen that they uh, produce into the atmosphere and increase the oxygen levels. That said, there are still uh, requirements for things like the roots to be taking oxygen and you can kill a tree by overwatering it and making the soil so wet that oxygen just cannot reach the roots. So oxygen is required by plants but overall plants tend to be net producers of oxygen and therefore release excess oxygen into the atmosphere. Heterotrophs on the other hand they desperately need oxygen and we require oxygen for aerobic respiration. The next probably most important uh, substance that is required is water, and water can diffuse uh, from high concentration to low concentration as a gas, or it can move osmotically as a liquid. Water is critically important primarily for transport, and we will look at um, transport in the next little section, the last section of our Organization of Living Things module. Water is also a very important reactant in the process of photosynthesis, particularly in photosystem one, that first stage of photosynthesis where uh, those water molecules are broken down, we release oxygen, and we um, set up some hydrogen ions or protons and electrons for some of those important pumps that are part of that process. So we require water. And in fact, we've also looked at the transpiration stream, the amount of water that's actually moving through a plant, and a very large amount of that water is actually just going straight up through the stem, through the xylem vessels, and out through the stomata in the leaves, and not all being used for chemical reactions in the cells. So water is a very, very important commodity for autotrophs. Now it's also important for heterotrophs. So we too require water, animals require water, again, primarily for transport, but also uh, water's involved in a number of different chemical reactions in a heterotrophs as well. When we get to nutrients, well, there's a very large number of these. Because plants are autotrophs, they're going to be producing some of the key organic compounds themselves, but they need a number of inorganic substances in order to assist not just with that very important process of photosynthesis, but also in some of the processes of metabolism that occur inside of the cells. So you can see magnesium, uh, manganese, iron, sodium, potassium, and calcium, all very important ions that are required by plants, and these are also required by animals. 
So the same sort of uh, cations, not necessarily in the same proportions, are required for some very important chemical reactions that occur. And of course, sodium potassium, very important uh, in humans as part of the nerve system response. In plants, the absorption of nutrients often comes via the roots, particularly in terms of the ions that may be dissolved in water. They're going to be absorbed through the roots as the um, water is also taken up, or there can be some active transport. And remember, active transport requires an input of energy, and that's to try and facilitate the movement of particular substances against their concentration gradients. Heterotrophs also require nutrients, but they tend to have digestive systems, and in those complex digestive systems, they will be breaking down the foods that they eat to release some of these important organic and inorganic uh, substances that are required by heterotrophs for their life processes. We can also add energy to our comparison table. Um, we've looked primarily at photosynthetic autotrophs. There are some chemosynthetic autotrophs, and we know that some of those, for example, um, occur around some of the black smokers um, in the ocean, in the deep ocean, where there is no light, but there's sufficient um, chemical energy uh, more a reduction kind of uh, reactions that are occurring in order to generate sufficient energy for those organisms to survive. So photosynthesis isn't the only way that autotrophs can produce their food. It's just probably the most common way and certainly the one that we'd be most familiar with. For heterotrophs, the energy form is ATP. We've looked at that before and that uh, particular molecule is what is produced in the process of respiration. And hence we go right back to the top again with oxygen being a very important uh, input substance for uh, heterotrophs in order for that process of aerobic respiration to occur. So as I say, comparison tables are a really nice way of giving you a good overview of the key things that you need to remember when you're looking at comparing autotrophs and heterotrophs in terms of their gas and nutrient requirements. Thanks for watching.